Yeah, my name is Brett Lodge. I'm the Managing Director at Subnet in South Australia. Um, our focus is really on not-for-profits, especially age and disability care, and also in education. But we do deal with a whole range of different clients in South Australia. From a technical side, our technical specialists really work on things like Fordnet, Cisco, uh, Citrix, uh, and also uh, Lenovo is probably a key partner. From our point of view, really, it started back in April um, and we did see a spike in sales right at the start of the, the, the COVID crisis. Um, it led to a lot of laptops and peripherals and so we had a big boost from that. Um, many of our customers are already enabled for remote work with cloud and Citrix virtual desktop, so we didn't need to really scramble or, or do much from that point of view. Going forward, you know, May was a little bit quiet. We had some business hold off, I think, in May, people just trying to get to grips on, on what's happening and, and how it was working. But really, um, in May, we also had a, uh, some of our clients obviously had some financial difficulties and impacts. So that's where we kind of did things like our uh, um, dropping some uh, costs in managed services and, and support for them um, to give them a bit of a reprieve for when, when they really were in need. Post May, uh, we went through June and June really, um, we saw that ramp up uh, start to take place. Um, so it was getting back to normal. Uh, April, August and September, yeah, really for us now uh, in South Australia, it has been business as, as usual. Moving forward uh, in October, November, December, um, we're really trying to, or, or I guess keeping to our same action plan. And um, currently uh, we haven't really seen any big, big impacts um, from a financial sense. Uh, we are expecting, um, you know, potentially some changes as so, things like the, the JobKeeper programs um, come to an end and, and other government programs we might see some impacts from that. But from a general point of view, we're seeing our customers really um, back to normal spend, doing projects again, uh, and really starting to dig into some of those media projects that they were planning for, for earlier in the financial year, um, really coming through into the first half of uh, 2021. From our side, really the South Australian market, both regionally and in the metro areas, um, are really kind of back to normal. When we've uh, done some queries with our customers, we went out and did a survey and tried to get a bit of a gauge on where their spend was likely to be and, ha and how they were planning to, I guess, invest their money. Um, from doing those uh, those surveys, what we really found is everyone's really trying to drive into that security play. Um, so we're expecting to see a lot of security projects as it, as it kind of moves forward, um, especially with everyone, uh, I guess, still largely having an element of working from home. Uh, it makes a big difference and obviously people haven't really set up a lot of their infrastructure or set up a lot of their, their um, security in the view of having everyone working from home. So that's kind of an area that we're expecting to see a lot more projects kind of come from. Yeah, look, from projects, really, we're seeing everything largely return to normal. Um, we did have some uh, people in some of our projects, especially our larger projects, kind of went on a bit of a, uh, a hiatus for a little bit there. Um, but that really has subsided now, and they're really back in full speed and, and obviously needing to catch up the time they lost during the, the, the hiatus. Um, as far as new projects, we're definitely seeing new projects come back on the ball. People are really starting to consider things now, um, both in size from small and large projects. Uh, it really seems to be, certainly from a South Australian point of view, um, back to normal business really for everyone and now they're just trying to catch up on the, the time they lost or the ground they lost while they were kind of uh, sitting back and waiting to see what happened. Look, from an investment in technology standpoint, we've got um, a lot of customers really focused, uh, I, I think, in the security spend. Um, that's coming about based on having a whole heap of end users at home and, and trying to work through those. Um, I think early days uh, from a technology sense, we had a lot of people just do the immediate, okay, we need someone, we need someone to be able to work from home and, and didn't really contemplate what that meant. Um, they spent years building up their technology infrastructure, I guess, from a uh, from their back-end point of view, but not really from the, the front-end, not end with the end user user. Um, so what we're seeing now is people just doing a lot more and thinking a lot more about what the impacts are for the end user and then kind of working through that type of uh, solution. Um, so I think that's probably going to be the, the main thing that we're seeing in 2021. Um, we do have uh, a lot of customers working through some business intelligence and, and more business as usual style uh, projects that they've been working on over the last few years. Um, but I think that working from home is really driving a lot of that, whether that's um, remote work and, and better enabling that um, as opposed to maybe initially running through a VP VPN or, or something like that, actually providing a real remote work solution, um, as well as, as I said, the, the security makes a big difference in, in how they're going to actually enable and, and support their end users fully secure uh, from any location. And I think that's going to be a big play as well.
From a security standpoint, really our managed service clients and, and our long-term clients, they do definitely rely on us from a, from a large piece. I think they really need to get their head around you know, what impacts they're really going to be and what things they need to focus on. I think security as a general is, is still pretty overwhelming for a lot of small to medium enterprise customers that we'd have in Australia and especially in South Australia. Um, so they are relying on us. Uh, from our point of view, we've really tried to lead them into, I guess, two different phases. Um, we've used a thing we call the Subnet Secure 7, which is the very basics, what do we need every managed service customer to have and how does that look and what do they need to do to work with us on a security journey. And then we've got outside of that, we can, we can kind of talk to them about all the things that kind of flow in from that. So whether that's security policies, which typically we're finding a lot of clients just really haven't thought about, and especially now with uh, people working from home, they don't have enough detail in the policies to help support that if there's an incident or um, just to protect them. So I think the policies is a big thing that we're, we're seeing a lot of people really need to focus on and they need our help on. Uh, and then obviously from the technological side, they've got the infrastructure stuff pretty much teed away with a you know a next gen firewall or whatever. But we're now starting to get a lot more requests where people are, are understanding the impacts and certainly some of the, the breaches we've seen around Australia. Um, they're seeing the impacts of that and actually really needing to step up their game. So our, our larger clients are certainly interested in our you know incident and event monitoring type services and security analysis services. Um, so they're really targeted at that level. Look, with our customers, from a starting point, that, that Subnet Secure 7 really is that very, very baseline. You know, it's stuff around, how, are you doing dark web searches to make sure you, your people aren't compromised? Have you got an incident response plan in place that's going to enable you to basically advise the right people or tell the right people if there is an incident and then how you're going to tackle that? And that's already been thought through. So there's a lot of the very basics in the Subnet Secure 7. Um, and that's, for us, is more of a mandatory thing to be a managed service client of ours. We really need you to have some of those basics in place that we can really support you. So there are a lot of customers that kind of need to be led into that and, and we've gone through a process over the last year or so um, to really try and drive that home. But now what we're seeing, I guess, is that, that next level up where we're seeing clients, you know, want to tackle that next level and, you know, do they need to have some sort of seam solution or do they need to have 24 by 7 security monitoring so that they can actually deliver on those, uh, I guess, those high level tasks if, if required. Um, so that's something that we're really helping them with, as I said, in conjunction with things like policies and procedures, which is a, another really key area for us. Yeah, with, with the messaging and with the, certainly the information that's coming through around breaches, um, I think people are starting to take notice. I think there is still an element, especially in the, the small to medium, uh, where they think it's a someone else problem. Um, and that's something we've done a lot to try and educate um, a lot of our SME customers, you know, talking about how that would feel or what that would look like. Um, I think there are certain customer segments that make a difference. We've got, you know, transport customers that see things like the big toll breaches. And that makes, a, I guess, a much more tangible difference to them because they can see the direct correlation. So I think there are elements of certain customers that really do get it and they're the ones that we've seen doing you know, a massive investment over a fairly short period of time. I think there's still an element, especially in SME, definitely in South Australia, but also, I guess, around the rest of Australia where they still see that as a, a big corporate problem or you know, it's not really going to happen to us and, and it's kind of that conversation around um, really educating them to make sure that they understand that anyone can be breached and there are more and more every day. Um, I think the message is starting to get there, but, yeah, so I think there's still some work to be done. Yeah, moving into 2021, I, I think really, to be honest, the most of the stuff started from our plan back in 2017. Um, well, we have seen some changes. 2017, we really, for us, was trying to think forward and going, you know, what is it going to mean to the industry and how are we going to kind of work in that industry? Obviously, at that point, we saw a lot of the security picture that we're seeing play out today kind of um, happen. Um, so for us, a lot of the planning that we did was really around doing a key investment in security so that um, each uh, different part of our business was obviously secure and then taking that forward, turning those products into products that obviously we could leverage for our clients. Um, I think in our market in the next six months, the things that we've really tried to drive on uh, are things like um, setting up our own uh, internal operation center, 24 by 7 operation center. The operation center, the whole plan of that, it kind of really leads into both the COVID and the security play where we're having a hype of clients working from home. And um, when they're working from home, obviously they're working different hours that they wouldn't normally expect to when you're working from an office. And so they need support outside of the, the standard hours. So our big thing that we've, got, we've been pushing on uh, recently is kind of building that 24 by 7 presence with our own internal guys, meaning that we've got control and, and how we price and how we deliver that to our clients. 
So that's one thing that's probably a, a big thing that we're changing and we've seen change. I think the other thing that we've, we've seen as part of the security play is obviously a level of certification, and I guess, acknowledgement in the industry that you know, we need to get better ourselves and, and have some of that, um, I guess, more controlled framework. So we've also been working on things like the ISO 27001 uh, security framework for us internally. Um, and that way, customers can feel safe and secure that, that the processes that we're using and, and for, on their behalf um, is really making a difference. I think for us then on top of that is like over the last 12 months, especially we've been putting in different security products, annuity based security products, especially where customers don't have to do a big bang approach and, and kind of freak out about, Hey, I've got to come up with 50 or hundred grand to try and roll out a full security solution. And instead, Hey, I need to come up with a few hundred dollars here or a few hundred dollars there per month to try and get access to a lot of the features that I guess large corporates can do, but at a price that completely makes sense. So again, leading into us um, in, the, in the short to medium term, especially early 2021, um, having that operation center that we've kind of already got in place built on with the rest of the security products like incident and event monitoring and security analysis, kind of providing a, a full SOC service, um, but for SMEs is a real focus of ours. And, and that's only something that we're seeing uh, the industry needing and, and obviously being able to drive that um, is making a big difference to our clients.